Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the website where you can find free tutorials for Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, Lightroom, and Adobe Camera Raw, written by some of the best writers from around the world, and today happens to be my turn. I recently took this photograph at Peterborough Cathedral of the light coming through the windows, but unfortunately it wasn't a stained glass window, so I've had to go and add the colours myself. It's not a difficult technique, so let's get cracking and see how I managed to do it. Now you can follow along. There's two files you might need. They're called Coloured Window and No Stained Glass, both of which are available for downloading from tipsquirrel.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, then there should be a link underneath this video for where you can find the downloads. OK, let's go over to No Stained Glass. And there's the original image. Pretty boring. Not a very good image at all, really, but it's what we've got to work with. And we've got a coloured window, which is just a quick snapshot of one of the glass windows so that I could bring this across. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So with my Move tool, I'm just going to click on the image and drag it across to the tab of No Stained Glass. And then when it comes up, I can drag it onto the image. You see I've got that border around the image. I can drop it down, and there we are. Now it's bigger than what I can see, so Control 0 will bring everything on, and then Control T to transform it, Control 0 again, and you can see that it even puts in the transform handles for us. Then all I need to do is just click and drag it around until I find where I want it to be. Now this is a bit difficult because I can't see the image underneath, so I'm going to just click and drag on the word opacity, and that will bring the opacity of that layer down so I can see where I need it to be. So once I'm generally in the right place, what I can do then is press Control if you're using Windows, Command if you're using a Mac, and you'll see that my pointer will change. As I get near that corner, there we go, I've got a different kind of pointer, and that means I can then use this handle independently of the others. So I can kind of start warping that around into the shape that I want. And there we go, make sure I get that up on the top. And there we are, I've got this kind of general shape of what I'm after. OK, click the tick or press Enter. And there we have it. Let's crank up the opacity of that. Good. Let's turn off the visibility of that layer just for a second. Control-0 to bring everything back in screen. And go over to the channels, because we're going to make a mask. I've already done one here, but let's create a new one. I need to find the layer with the most contrast between the lights and the darks. Red, green, or the blue. And the blue is the darkest, so that's the one I'm going to go for. Right click on that and duplicate the channel. The name blue copy is fine. Let's click OK on that. And now I need to turn off the visibility of the blue and turn on the visibility of the blue copy. And we can do that. There we go. And then Control or Command L will bring up levels. Now I want to keep all the light bits and get rid of the dark bits, so I just need to drag this black slider along, and then when I get just so I can see some of the mid-tones, I'll stop, and then I'll drag this mid-tone one in just so as I can get rid of those mid-tones. But I don't want to get rid of too much. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I end up with a 62, a 0.74, and a 255 if you're working along. We'll see how we come with that one, shall we? And all I need to do then is press OK. Now I've got my mask all set to go, but I need, of course, to transfer that over to our other layer. So Control or Command and click on the thumbnail of Blue Copy, and that'll bring up a selection. Click on the RGB layer, and then back to Layers, and turn on the visibility of Layer 1. And then all we could do is create a mask. So click on the Mask layer, and there we have it. It's all masked in. It doesn't look much good, though, does it, really? So let's do something about that. Well, first of all, the light just isn't kind of right. So let's change the blend mode of that from normal to vivid light, I found works reasonably well. It kind of brings all the colors out. Still not great, though. Let's reduce the opacity of that just so we can see it in context. It's getting better, but we need to give it a bit more color. So a hue saturation adjustment layer. If you haven't got the adjustments panels open, you can always open it from down here, this black white icon, hue saturation. And I'm going to boost the colors up just a little bit. 
Now the problem we have here is that we are using vivid light. So if I go too far, you can see it starts getting a bit grim. If I go too low, it starts to get a bit grim too. So I need to be a bit careful with this. And I'm going to take it to around about 27-ish. Same will go for the lightness and the darkness. It looks like it could do with being a bit darker, but it doesn't work very well, if I'm honest. Now, unfortunately there, I was doing everything on the whole layer, and we don't really want that. If you're using CS6, that's easy to, to combat. I'm just going to click this icon down the bottom here, and that will clip it to the underlying area, or underlying layer, I should say. So now I'm just affecting what's directly underneath this, which is the, the layer 1 which is our stained glass. Let's have a look at the saturation. You see it just goes a bit ratty if you're not careful. Okay, I'm going to leave it about 40 in fact. Okay, there we go. Still not looking like a reflection because we need to add a blur to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on layer 1 and then right click and convert to a smart object. Now because I'm going to add some blur to this, Making it a smart object means that I can always go back and alter the blur later, which is quite helpful should I mess up. And, you know, I do quite often. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you can see I've already chosen 26.4, which comes out quite nice. Kind of a dappled effect, but you can experiment with what, whichever figure you like. So where did I go? 20-ish. There we go, 27. And all I could do then is press OK. And we're just about done. I can see that we could perhaps do with a bit of a tweak on the hue saturation. And I'm also not liking the, the stained glass that's actually coming through. Now I can combat that by going down to our layer here. And uh, then just moving that around in the smart object. So if I double click, the smart object will come up. And what I can do then is unlink the two. And I can move my image around within the mask to try and find somewhere better. Now, of course, I might need to bring the opacity up just so as I can find somewhere and then bring the opacity back down. So I've made it a little bit fiddlier for myself there, really. I should have got that one right beforehand. We'll say no to that. There we go. You can also try a bit of motion blur in there or box blur works quite well as well and see how you get on. And there we are. We've created this stained glass effect on the floor of the cathedral even though it wasn't there. Now, on my original image, you may have noticed that the background was a bit darker. Let me very quickly do that. This is a technique that I use quite a bit. Use a new layer, fill it with 50% grey, shift and backspace, choose 50% grey, click OK, change that to soft light, and then with a black brush, brush, uh, low opacity, I can then just burn that down now. You may be thinking, why am I not using the, the burn tool? Well, it's because this is the habit of mine. I like using this technique. If you'd like to use the dodge and burn tools, that's quite okay. Uh, this is just doing exactly the same thing. I just feel like I'm a bit, a bit more controlled. And also, I like the kind of drawing kind of feel that you get from doing this. If I change the foreground color to white, and then I can just, just highlight that a little bit more, make a bit more light on this column. OK, there we go. I'll keep working on this when you're not watching. I'm Eric Reno. Thank you very much indeed for sticking with me. Don't forget to check out tipsgrill.com. There's people with far more talent than me writing there. Go and see what they've got to say for themselves. Until next time, thanks again. Bye-bye for now.